Okay, this section is on solving linear and literal equations. I'm going to move ahead here to a banking problem. And here is a banking problem right here. And you might be wondering why I'm doing this problem, but you'll see here when we get to example four. This one says, uh, how much money do you have in a bank that gives a 7.25% interest rate compounded yearly for five years if you invest $500? It says you will need to use this formula right here, P A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT, where A is the amount of money you end up with. P is the principal, the amount that you deposit in the bank. R is your interest rate, and it has to be uh, changed to a decimal. N is the number of times that you get interest in a year. So if it's annually, you're getting interest once, so the N would be 1. If it's quarterly, you're getting interest four times a year, so the N would be four. And if it's uh, monthly, it would be 12. And if it's daily, the N would be 365. And T is the number of years you leave the money in the bank. Now, for this particular problem up here, it says you, do, you invest $500, so that's your principal. Your interest rate is 7.25%, so you need to move your decimal point two places to the left, which would be 0 0.0725. Since it's compounded yearly or annually, your N would be one, and you're leaving the money in the bank for five years. Now, you could just do this on a calculator if you wanted to and just take, uh, uh, if you had a graphing calculator, it would be 500 parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.0725 divided by 1, which is 0 0.0725, raised to the 1 times 5, which is 5. So it's just a matter of uh, multiplying some numbers together. Now, uh, you can do the, all these type of banking problems on the Excel sheet called Bank, and that's what I'm on. On the left-hand side of the sheet, you'll see a formula that looks like this, and here's where we'd be finding the amount of money. So I put in my principal, my rate, my number of times I get interest in a year, and my number of years, and here's my answer right here, and underneath is the amount of interest that I earned. All right? So let's go ahead and look at the uh, uh, next example here. This one still isn't much at all. This is just changing from annually over to compounded quarterly. So the N would change to 4 on the bank sheet and you'd just make a little bit extra money because you're getting interest more times a year. Now here's why we're actually doing this problem is because on example 4 it says if your investment is compounded monthly at 6.25 percent, what would your principal need to end up with? Uh, what would your principal need to be to end up with $5,000 in the bank at the end of seven years? And again, we'll need to use the same formula. Now, on this particular problem, let's take a look at solving it by hand here a second. We want to end up with $5,000, so that's the amount that you're looking to end up with. The uh, formula here is 1 plus the interest rate. The interest rate was 6.25%, which is 0 0.0625, and it was compounded, if we read it through here, uh, let's see, compounded monthly. So the N is 12, so it's divided by 12, raised to the N times T, and N is 12, and the T is 7 because it says 7 years. Now we have to solve this for P. Now, uh, what you could do if you were going to uh, do this uh, on a calculator, you could take uh, this 0 0.0625 divided by 12, and then add 1 to that answer, then take that answer and raise it to the 84th power because 12 times 7 is 84. Then you would get some really messy uh, number here that's times P that equals 5,000. Well, that's an equation that needs solved, so you would have to divide by whatever this is on both sides. Or you could just do it right off the bat and just say 5,000 divided by this hunk of stuff. Now you could type that into any white cell on the Excel sheet so again, I need to take 5,000 divided by this stuff, and I'll do that on any Excel sheet here. Let's see. Let's just uh, tell you what. I'll just go back to the instruction sheet and, and use uh, you know, this cell here that gives you a lot of decimal places. So let me shrink this down a second, and we need to take – so I'm going to uh, give myself some room. So again, to solve this equation, we need to divide both sides by this quantity here. So I'll need to take – if I wanted to do this – just on a calculator or on Excel, I would type in equals 5,000 divided by this quantity right here, which is 1 plus 0 0.0625 divided by 12, close parentheses, and now I'm going to uh, raise that, so I'm going to do caret up. And that's 12 times 7. I could just leave it like that, but, if I have to, but I would have to put it in parentheses, 12 times 7. And when I hit enter, I get right here 
$3,231.91. And I believe that's what we end up with right there. So we can do these, you know, on a calculator or in Excel, but the Excel sheet, we have um, this banking sheet. Okay, so we can do this right over here where we're finding the uh, principal. So finding the principal, the amount that we need to end up with is 5,000. I type that in. Here's your interest rate of 0 0.0625. The N was 12 because it was compounded monthly, and in seven years, we want to end up with that $5,000. So how much would we have to invest? Right here, $3,231.91. All right, so uh, we'll take a look at another problem. Okay, on this example, we're solving this rather messy linear equation. So um, we'll get this. Okay, if we were going to solve this problem right here using the Excel sheet, okay, we could use the solver sheet. So let me go ahead and go to the solver sheet a second. Okay, in the solver sheet, right here it says solver. And how you do this is you type in the left-hand side of your equation right here where it says left-hand side. You type equals, and then we type in 3 times, and shift with the 8. Now, you have to use x as the variable, so it will be 3 times x. And see, 3x doesn't cut it in Excel. You have to put the times in between. So 3 times x, then divided by 4, then minus 2 times x. Now I'll have to put this in parentheses because it's all of this over 3. So parentheses, 2 times x minus 1, close parentheses, divided by 3, and hit enter. And they all say name there until we click the solve button. The right hand side, well I'm sorry, let's go back over here a second. I have to also, there's a plus 1 at the end of this equation. So plus, sorry, plus 1. So there's the left hand side of the equation. The right hand the side of the equation, let's just uh, type in here equals, that would be 5 times x divided by 2 minus parentheses 3 times x minus 5, close parentheses, and that's that side. Now once you do that, just go down here and click solve, and it will solve the problem and you get 6.29 or 6 and 2 sevenths, and that is the right answer. And in fact, it graphs the left-hand side and right-hand side and the point of intersection, uh, the x part of the point of intersection is what solves that equation. So again, the solution is right here, 6.29 or 6 and 2 sevenths. And if we look, that is the right answer to it. Now, to solve this by hand, it is a bit of a pain. What we'd have to do is multiply by the common denominator, which is 12. And 4 goes into 12, 3 times, 3 times, 3 is 9, so it would be 9t. 3 goes into 12 4 times. 4 times the 2t minus 1. I'll distribute that through later. Plus this 1 is over 1, so 1 goes into 12 12 times. 12 times 1 is 12. That equals, let's go back to it here, that equals 2 goes into 12 6 times. 6 times 5t is 30t. This is over 1. 1 goes into 12 12 times. And 12 times this stuff, I'll take care of that later. So I clear the fractions. That's the first step. Now distribute through the parentheses, taking the minus 4 through. That would be, min be minus 8t, and then plus 4, and take the minus 12t through here, making it minus 36t plus 60. Combining like terms, we would have t, because 9t minus 8t is t, and 4 and 12 is 16. On this side, 30t minus 36t is minus 6t, and then plus 60. I'll get all your t's on one side. I added 6t to both sides to get 7t. Then I subtracted 16 from both sides to get 44. Finally, divide through by the 7 on both sides to get the same answer we had. So that's how you solve linear equations. Do you even listen to yourself when you talk? I drift in and out. <laughs>